So we just won't talk about that while we record. Are they still drunk? Are they hungover? Sophie and Daniel, definitely not sober. You're listening to the Hangover You Don't Deserve podcast. Hi guys, welcome <laughs> to episode 48 uh, of a Hangover You Don't Deserve podcast. I'm Daniel, uh, this is Sophie. Oh wow, this time, so so to what, three weeks in a row you've had a swig of a drink, right? As I've said, this is Sophie, and today you want to start lighting a cigarette. Just introduce yourself first, that's all I'm asking you to do. I don't smoke. Um, <laughs> hi, what, what, was, what was the question? <laughs> there was yes, no I question. So- yes, I am Sophie. Oh. Thank you. Well, there you go, guys. That sets that sets the bar for this show. Um, welcome. If you're a new listener, hi. Hope you enjoy the show. I'm waving like you can see me. You can't. Um, before we get ahead of ourselves, let's just say thank you to our Patreon supporters who have funded the show from the beginning. And um, we have no advertising and all the money that we make comes from them. So thank you, uh, especially to Adria Bowman and Jared Spear, who've shown us consistent support from the beginning. It's like almost like they are enablers, really. <laughs> no, because this isn't a bad habit. It's it they're they're the other listeners enablers. That's what they are because they're con- uh-huh. they're continuing to encourage this content to be created, and the other people who are addicted to listening to our terrible <laughs> podcast, <laughs> they're like, man, I wish I could just stop listening to this show. You know, like like we've talked about, hate watching a show that you don't like, like but you you want to you want to keep watching it. You've got to see it through to the end. Yeah, yeah. you want to see how it turns out. Yeah, people Which are like, man, I die first. <laughs> people are just like man I, I can't wait for this show to just fall apart and i'm gonna have said that i'm gonna have been one of the people who was there at the time <laughs> so how's your week been oh it's been good actually um <laughs> every I, week you're not prepared for that question it's the first thing we ask i i don't know i just show up to, <laughs> to this thing <laughs> um, i'm here what more could you want from me exactly uh why don't you go first this time? And I want I want to ask you how your week was because I always forget and you always bitch about it. Okay. Do you want to ask then? Okay. I'm sorry. I thought me saying that was asking, but okay. No, you're one of those people who like proper beats around the bush with an apology but never actually says sorry. That's what you are. <laughs> um, yeah, my week. Was I been... ever say sorry? I'm not wrong ever. Anyway, sorry. Carry oh. on. <laughs> Ooh. I could do 45 minutes on that subject. Um, yeah, my week's been been okay. It's been good. Um, nothing out of the ordinary during the week. We went, I went to Ashes the weekend as I usually do, and we went to uh, when I played snooker um, because that's something that Aisha does on a regular basis now. Because she, she, well, so she she looks after oh. someone with with, with autism. Uh, does a couple a couple of days a week with them. And that's one of the activities that they go and do. Uh, and so, but she, she, she's like, I, and I can understand this. She never played before until she started doing that. Mm-hmm. And she isn't good at it because she's never done it before. And that's very frustrating, which I can understand. Like, it would be a very boring activity if you had to do that for an hour and didn't know how to play, know any every of the rules single. or, yeah. And you have to do it every week. Yeah. So, so she just wanted to go like at a time when it's in her own time and, she can... Oh wait! So she's practicing so she can beat this guy. Is that what it is? <laughs> I don't. I don't think that's what it is. I think it's just so she can enjoy the game. But she's um, just doing some illegal training. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's what it is. Um, that was an interesting experience because I've not been in a snooker club for a long time because the the one in Staley Bridge kind of. I don't really know what happened. It's it's got like it. They, they used to have like twenty three snooker tables. And the purpose of the snooker club was to play snooker. And now it's a pub where they show the football and I think they might have one or two snooker tables in there. It's very weird. Very, very odd. And no one's in there to play snooker anymore. So I haven't been in a very long time. Yeah, well, Um, when you mentioned it to me the other day, I thought there's definitely been a decline in those type of clubs. So like hmm. the working men's club. Yeah, that's that's basically what it is. I used to go to every single Sunday religiously. And then... Yeah, and... um, I just said something about how the woman behind the bar terrifies her. And I was like, yeah, you have to be terrifying. If you're going to be a woman working in one of those places, you would have to be like on guard all the time, like <laughs> never letting shit fly because those, those, it's those people that are going in those places, like terrorizing people. <laughs> Trying to break snooker cues over other people's backs and stuff. 
No, you're thinking more 80s America. This is 80s um, England. <laughs> oh, so just stabbing people in the car park? Yeah. yeah Broken glasses? Yeah, that, yeah, that was it. Yeah, the cues, the cues don't come into it. You respect the cue. <laughs> right, of course. That's a part of the game. Because you, have that's... To, because you have to pay the deposit to, to play the game. <laughs> you want to get your £10 back yeah. at the end. <laughs> yeah. I've, I put a score down on this. I'm not fucking breaking it over your back. Um, but it is a very very odd atmosphere in there because it's it's the kind of place where you can imagine you'd go in and everyone would be smoking but no one would say anything about it <laughs> like, yeah. that's just, and not not that that was happening but it felt like nobody would bat an eyelid if you lit up a cigarette in here you know yeah um, and back in the day it would just be like a cloud of smoke definitely mm, yeah it, it, like cigar same, smoke even same vibes as a taxi rank somehow yes not, not sure why but that's <laughs> oh the same oh my god <laughs> totally is i don't know what that what that correlation is there but you're right <laughs> but the other thing that was interesting was that they, they have like lots of dart boards in there as well and i've never been anywhere where a lot of people are like playing darts but there were there were like four or five games on the go and people sat right. around watching it was it was interesting i've never been anywhere that's like that i know darts is like like professional like professional dart players obviously have to practice somewhere and play somewhere but you can have a dartboard in your garage can't you so it's yeah yeah well, that's if the same, you have a garage i guess i say that like <laughs> i have a garage i don't i'm not like one of those people you know rich people oh god well when actually when we were kids we did have a garage but it, it came with the house not like attached <laughs> it was like you know when you have like Obviously a row of it came with the house no i mean you know when you have a <laughs> <laughs> get yeah, it from the argos catalog <laughs> Mom, the yeah. garage is here. <laughs> you know when you have like a row of houses and then the next street is just a row of garages? And they're all oh, yeah. No, see, I think that's a poor person thing. Yeah. So see, what we, you're we, describing, it to for Americans to understand, it's kind of like what you'd see on Storage Wars. Yes, yes. Where they, that, <laughs> where they I mean. open up those like storage units. We would have that row, like that row of storage units that you always see them at. We would have that, but it would just be garages because yeah, but the no houses... one keep, no one keeps the car in there. It's just a junk room. Yeah, I think what's funny is the nobody could be asked walking from the garage because it was on a different street. Mm. Like, why would why would I park my car over there? I live over here. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, point of a garage is that it's attached to my house. It's a room where I can put my car. If you're not going to yeah. put the garage on the house, I'll just park outside the house on the street. That'll yeah. be fine. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Oh, darts. Yeah, just there was a lot of spectators and stuff. And I know that in America, like darts, like league darts and stuff, I think is a bigger thing than it is here. You, go, if you, There's plenty of pubs that you go in that have dartboards, but no one's ever playing. Yeah, as far as I know, I can only think of like one pub that I go to that has one, and the people that I I would go with would kind of half play a game and then couldn't be asked. But um, yeah. they, they, we do have that show Bullseye. Is that still going? I think it is, isn't it? Um, not that I know of. Maybe they've um, re- remade it. But there's still a there's still there is a dart program that comes on there. Is it? Maybe darts. Are you watching the darts? The darts. <laughs> <Is that laughs> <what it's called? laughs> you're watching. You're watching professional darts. Is that what you're talking about? Maybe. Maybe I'm just getting confused. I'm just you're watching like, like Challenge TV. Darts Challenge TV World even exists <laughs> anymore? <laughs> yeah, that's all I should watch is. Well, it, I'm jealous. I, 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 that's why we. That's why we had that segment where we talked about game shows for like 45 minutes because it's <laughs> on a Sunday before I leave to come home and do the podcast. I spend all morning watching reruns of, of game shows because that's what Aisha has on. <laughs> but Aisha puts it on to watch reruns of The Chase, which I hate. But then because it, it's still, because Challenge is still on from the night before when she's been watching The Chase, then in the morning it's like Supermarket Sweep, Catchphrase, Bullseye, all of those things. So I'm like, yeah, I'll watch this all day. That's great. Um, I, I, I thought I remembered it being a big deal fairly recently, like a few years ago. But I think I'm again getting mixed up with snooker. That they weren't allowed, the players weren't allowed to drink beer on TV anymore. So like they was always when they were filming, just be drinking pints, like while they that, were waiting for the other player. I think that might be darts because there's obviously uh, a big drinking culture behind darts. Um, yeah. But no snooker, I've not seen that. Uh, I don't, yeah, re- I don't remember seeing that, that at all, actually. 
right? It must have sure, been dark. It, it will have been in snooker as well at some point. But um... is it dark then, where the crowd are like so drunk on yes. TV? <laughs> yeah, and and they I show the crowd all the time, and it's a big party yeah. thing. Yeah. Maybe that's kind of like our NASCAR. Yeah, maybe. But it's no, just not really big. No. No, I'm sure there must be a, an American sport that's closer to to that atmosphere, where it's like indoors and mm. and everyone's just hammered. Right. I don't know. I don't know. I was watching Frasier last night, and uh, they were in a bookstore, and Niles was pretending he just picked up this book to pretend to read. And Frasier asked asked him something, and he's like, "Sorry, I'm just engrossed in this book, Legend of NASCAR." <laughs> Legends of NASCAR. <laughs> That's funny because I'm pretty sure Kelsey Grammer owns loads of sports cars. <laughs> nice. Um, I'm sure that um, he got arrested once because he was coked up behind the wheel of his Dodge Viper. Like I'm <laughs> sure that was a thing at one point. He's, a bad he, man. Yeah, we've said this before. He's extremely not Frasier. Um, <laughs> it's funny to me because. Frasier is something that's always been on on Channel 4 in the morning when I've been getting ready for school and then mm. before work. That's when I watch Frasier. It's funny to imagine you watching it as evening entertainment. <laughs> that's just... And I know that doesn't make any sense, but to me that's funny because Frasier is a morning show that you watch while you drink your coffee. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's too light to be evening entertainment. Well, I get home from work in the evening and I want to relax with something light, not watch some fucking... I don't know, what do you watch? Like, true crime or some shit? I want to watch, yeah, I want to watch someone solve a fucking murder. That's what I want to watch in the evenings. You know, the problem with those programs is a lot of them are just really crap. Like, <laughs> they, 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 they're just really dragged out. They do that thing where it's like, you're watching it on Netflix and you can tell it was made. It was made to be an hour long on television where they had commercial break every 15 minutes. Yeah. So it's basically just repeating itself constantly. As if, like, if you're just joining us after the break, yeah. we've gone through 45 minutes of this. Yeah. I'll tell you again, dead quick. <laughs> like, if for some reason you've started at part four, then let's just let's just fill you in. Yeah, that, recap I, the I, entire I do hate show. That. So, how has your week been then? Um, to be honest, I can't remember what happened. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think. Um, now, oh, if, it, if if the world wasn't super boring right now and you said, to be honest, I can't remember my week, I'd be like, oh, it must have been a good week then. But right now, yeah. if you can't remember your week, it's like, ah, yes, I, I, I know. Nothing happened then. Mm-hmm. It's just one of those, like, we're stuck in, it's kind of like Groundhog Day, isn't it? But Groundhog Week, Groundhog Month. <laughs> yeah, but no, it would still be Groundhog Day because the... No, it's like instead of starting at 6 a.m. with the... I got you, babe. It's starting at like a sun on a Sunday evening with our podcast song. <laughs> Except we don't actually we don't hear the song when we're we don't, recording. We so. don't hear the song, and it doesn't come out on a Sunday, so no one knows what you're talking about. <laughs> it's Sunday right now as we record this. Yes. Okay. One thing I did do was take Loki to the park, which was great. He enjoyed it. Um, but you know, again, that was uneventful. <laughs> And yeah. I mean, when I say the park, I take him to the park every day. It's a bigger park, slightly further away from the house. <laughs> right, okay, okay. Which is funny because he's such a small dog that to him it's inconsequential the size of the park. All parks are giant to him. Yeah, totally. Where was I or what was I? Oh, oh, why was I doing this? <laughs> I ask myself that all the time. Why was I doing this? <laughs> this is going to sound really creepy and weird, but I can't remember why why I got on, you know, when you're looking for something online and you end up searching for something totally different um, and you're like, how does I even get here? Are you talking about porn? Is that what's, no, <laughs> is no. that what's happening right now? You know, when you're looking for, this is going to sound creepy, but you know, when you're looking for something online and then you're, then you're watching <laughs> something with a fucking animal and you're like, can I get arrested for this? I didn't mean to click on this. Stop. Okay. No, it totally happens with that as well. I'm just talking about something else. (laughs) Um, I can't remember how it started, but anyway, I got onto. I was thinking about when I was in school and teachers I had when I was in primary school, and um, oh, I wondered if it was when you tweeted, uh, you retweeted, um, what was it? Search the Wikipedia page for your high school and see. Check the famous alumni. Yeah, notable 
students or whatever it was. And um, I went on mine and I mean, okay, I said there was none and I kind of lied, but kind of didn't because the, the high school I went to was like, my mum went to an all girls school on the same site and my dad went to an all boys school around the corner. And there was, I think, one or two notable ex-students from both of those schools. But, but then they was, merged. Yeah, they merged. And that was like 40 years ago or something, or maybe more. And there's been no one since. Anyway, um, so I was just, I don't know, I was looking at Wikipedia pages for schools, I guess. <laughs> and then I was um, that just does thinking sound about creepy, my own. Right? <laughs> yeah, it does, right? But it was my school. <laughs> it wasn't like I was... I don't know, doing something weird. And then I was trying to, um, I was thinking of old teachers I had in primary school and I was like, oh, I wonder if any of these teachers still work there. So I went mm. on my old primary school and then I was like, oh, I'll just go on their website. <laughs> and, um, and they're, they they're had... all, all dead. No, no. Well, <laughs> a couple of them definitely are. Mm -hmm. um, one or two of the names I recognized um, didn't have any photos of the staff, but it did have photos of the school building. And I saw a picture of, what was the, you know, the hall where you'd have assembly and also it was the gym. And ours was also the canteen as well. Um, yeah. And it was seemed fucking huge when I was a kid. Like, the, the ceilings were so high. I remember the curtains just being, like, so fucking high. Like, they must have cost so much, just that much fucking material, <laughs> the curtains. Yeah. Um, and I saw this picture of it and I was like, whoa, that's... That's not a large room at all. <laughs> like, oh, you have to fit hundreds of like ten year olds in here. So <laughs> they're like this big. I've I've been back to my primary school because my sister went there, so I've been back in and watched assembly I, in uh, there. And yeah, I mean I guess it was a little bit smaller than than I remembered, but it wasn't that drastic. Yeah, it, well it you continuously it, seeing it. I mean not continuously. I wasn't always there. Just like <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, I, I went I'm... back when I was like twenty and I've seen it again. Uh, so I see. When I was in, well, when I don't know how American schools work, but how my primary school worked was we had an infant school and a junior school that were like separate buildings, but it was the same same school. So, right. When you, okay. between the ages of like five and seven or something, you were in the infant school, and then right. from seven to ten, you were in the junior school. So when I was in um, junior school, so I was like I don't know eight or something. They uh, picked me and a couple of other kids out who were like well behaved or whatever, and sent us over to the infant school on our breaks to tidy the library. And that's the kind of shit like when you're like eight, you're like, oh yeah, yeah, Fuck same, yeah. <laughs> same. Yeah. We got told to tidy the library. Like that In was your, your reward. Spare time. <laughs> like what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, and um, so we used to do that like once a week or something. I think and. Uh, the first couple of weeks we did actually tidy the library but then eventually we just used to like hang out in there and just fucking talk shit <laughs> whatever eight-year-olds talk shit about uh, oh. our school was like just before we left we were like right on the cusp of technology becoming more and more a thing so we had like yeah. smart boards in like year five and year six right but they'd also got this new computerized library system and I mean, the the library must have been sixty books <laughs> when they had this computerized system to like check them in and out. And you like you could scan the the barcode on the book and it'd tell you what the book was and stuff. So yeah, when we got sent to tidy the library, but we talked about with this. When computer. you said when you said sixty books, I thought you meant sixty dollars. Right. Okay. Sorry. No. Continue. Uh, no, that was it. Just We just fucked about on that computer. The computer did nothing other than scanned books and told you what the book was. But we were just like, let's see if it knows what this one is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. I can see that you're drinking Guinness. So you're back mm -hmm. like, I feel like you've circled around and come back home. That's what it's like to me because uh -huh. it's been a while. Yeah, it has actually. Um, I've only got two cans with me right now and one of them's warm because I forgot to put it in the fridge. But, um, you Disgusting. Know. You're gonna do hey, it anyway. Of um, course. Yeah. What are you what are you drinking? So uh I'm still on the white claw and how much is, of that did you buy? Oh, I've been buying it each week to do this. <laughs> I see. This is the last I want to talk about it really because it's not interest it's not an interesting topic of conversation <laughs> in particular, but I was thinking because Americans love it, or it's huge in America, 
um, is what I should say. I shouldn't say all Americans love it. <laughs> um, and I was like, how it's so expensive. How are people getting drunk off this stuff? Because I buy like four cans when, I, when we do this podcast. And that's it. That's what I buy and drink. Mm-hmm. And I, so I looked it up. And at Walmart, you can get a 12-pack for yeah. si- $16.50, which is like £12.60, right? Nice. And the cans are 340 milliliters, which I know to Americans means nothing. That's like a can of Coke. Yes. Yeah. In the UK, but it's a little bit more than a can of Coke. In the UK, oh. they're 330 milliliters, which is a can of Coke. And the cans are £2.50 each. Or at the moment, they're on offer four for three. So it's four for £7.50, but normally it's four for £10. Oh, uh, right. So it's not even really cheap to drink. Yeah, that's, that's It's not problem. cheap at all. But in America, it's like a dollar a can. Well, I mean, it's a little bit more, but it, it's, it works out about a pound a can in America. Right, yeah. So we're paying fucking double that at least. More than double. More than double. Two Bullshit. and a half times the amount that it costs in America. So, and this is the thing, it's like, they can market stuff like that over here because they basically pitching it as like, now, all the way from America, now available in the UK. So, because it, because it's that, we have to pay more for it. Even though it's yeah. made here, it's not like they're shipping it over. They're <laughs> well, making isn't minimum, it here. Isn't minimum wage in America, like, double? Like, you know, not double, but in terms of, like, our minimum wage is, like, eight pounds an hour theirs is like 15 dollars or something right yeah but uh, uh, no i don't know but it, I, I think their minimum wage their minimum wage works differently and i know that you can earn way less than minimum wage like if you if you're like a saver or something yeah yeah i'm not sure how it works exactly but i think i think we're we're in a better state of no, I'm just talking about in regards to White Claw, not, not anything. <laughs> how many White Claws how many, do you pay? How many White Claws an hour? hour do you pay? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what, I'm, that's what I mean. <laughs> I love the idea of someone, like, getting their first job. Like, like you know, I guess, I guess you must be able to work for a few years before you can drink in America, though. Well, yeah. Well, you can here, but you don't really. No, you can't anymore because you have to be in education until you're 18 now. Yeah, but you can still. Oh, okay. But you can. Oh, so you can't work full time. I guess. No, no. So that that's kind of what I meant. Is you could you could go and get a job. You could be a fully fledged working adult in America and not be allowed to drink yet. I guess. That sucks. Um, because I'm sure they finish high school in eighteen. Yeah, they do. Okay, yeah. So that's that's crazy. But just imagining an American like getting their first job and being like, like you know, it's minimum wage or whatever, and they're like, man, I'm earning like. 12 white claws an hour all right <laughs> well that's what i that's kind of how i work it out if anyone i don't know do you not work work things out based on like no i suppose you don't get an hourly wage do you if you've got less like salary yeah but are you talking about like you work out how many pints you can buy because you start to sound like an alcoholic no not necessarily <laughs> with the year i guess but sometimes if i'm debating if i'm debating buying something i'm like oh i'd have to work like four hours for this is that worth it yeah that's a sensible way of thinking about that i guess um mm. but it's it's extra depressing when you think about like rent and shit you're like oh i have to work right. week before i can do anything yeah um, so, I guess. <clears throat> the last thing i want to say about white claw is that on the wikipedia <laughs> you page just said this? Oh, okay no i was saying this is the last time i want to talk about it this is the last thing i want to say at all is on the wikipedia page one of the things that they've noted as being the cause of the huge boom in profits that they've had over the last two years is its meme ability. I don't even know mm. what that means. I've never seen a White Claw meme, so I'd like to know what that is. I don't but, think the, the writers of that Wikipedia article know what a meme is. Maybe no, what, they're, no. just, they're just like, oh, people talk on Twitter about this. Yeah. The kids are memeing about it. Guys, it's going viral. <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> Last last week, I brought up a phrase, you know, a, an old person phrase. If that was last week, it may have been the week before. Anyway, my mum told me another phrase recently that I don't think is something old people say, but it's just something that she heard and she never heard before. And I love it. And it was, I wouldn't trust him to tip water out of a boot if the instructions were on the sole. Ha, funny. I like that. Yeah, I love that. I've, like, I've never heard that. It means 
it means absolutely nothing. What is that scenario? Who yeah, thought yeah. that up? <laughs> how did that become a phrase? I always wonder that, like, how do these obscure things, be- is this something that used to happen a lot in the olden days? Like, how did it, because one person can start saying something, it doesn't mean it's going to be like a na- national or like county-wide well-known saying. Like, who decides these things? Yeah, I reckon it's just people who, like, said something that they didn't mean anything by it, but the other person heard it and they were like, wow, that's so profound. I'm going to say that. I'm going to start saying that. (laughs) So I think we should move straight into a segment. Oh, Because we have segments because we're a professional show. So if you are not familiar, this is the the first time listening to the show or the first time you've heard this segment, then one of the things you can do on our Patreon is uh, subscribe to cancel someone every month. You can choose to cancel a celebrity or yourself. You can't cancel us. Doesn't work like that, I'm afraid, because we're in control. And you can't cancel other people that we don't know because I can't Google those people and find out why it's funny to cancel them. That's basically the rules. But other than that, it's time to cancel someone. What can I say except you're cancelled? Don't ask us because we don't know why. Hey, not okay, not okay, you're cancelled. From today until the day that you die. I like to act like we can hear that music being like channeled in, but we can't. Like, I like to imagine that we do, though. I hear it in my head, you know. (laughs) (laughs) It's funny how well you know that song, considering you don't listen to our podcast and you haven't seen Moana. So, (laughs) yeah, I just, it got stuck in my head, I think, when I first heard it. I only know our lyrics to it as well. Right, yeah, I just think that's so funny that we've got a parody of a song and you don't know the song. When it's like, was the fucking biggest song ever for like two straight years. It was the only thing. Yeah. I thought that was a Frozen song. Yeah, this was like the next one. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Lucy Murray wants to cancel Fred Durst. Oh, good choice. Yeah. It's it's been it's been a long time coming for Fred. Fred yeah. Um so I I feel like Fred Durst hasn't done anything wrong for a long time, but <laughs> everything he did was so annoying that it's, there's been a real build up, you know. It's like yeah, I think right? Lu- Lucy's been thinking about how do I get Fred Durst cancelled for a long time. Then our podcast came along and she was like, Well, I can't just dive straight in with Fred Durst or I'll look like I have like a problem with real problem with Fred Durst. I, I need. I don't want to look like a weirdo. So she saved it up for like month, whatever we're in <laughs> of of her cancelling people. Um. So let's do what we always do when we want to cancel someone, and we'll read about their their life on on Wikipedia. So Durst was born in Jacksonville, Florida. I mean, already, uh, you know, Florida man, <laughs> something. Florida man is cancelled, but soon moved to Orlando. Now, I've been there. It's the place with Disney, right? So I know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> so, you nice. know, at least there's that. Uh, and then a farm in Cherryville, North Carolina. Now, that sounds like a place I'd um, like to live. Cherryville. I want to live in a place called Cherryville. Sounds yeah, great. Yeah, sounds fun. Sounds delightful. Uh, at one year, one year old when he moved to Cherryville. So they'd moved twice by the time he was one, right? Now, if that doesn't say problem childhood... I don't know what those. In the fifth grade, he moved to Gastonia, North Carolina. We don't know how old fifth grade is, so I'm not going to look into it. Where he would later graduate high school. He was raised Wiccan. Now, let's take a pause there, okay? Raised Wiccan. Didn't know that about Fred Durst. No. Would never have guessed that, ever. No. No, not at all. At the age of 12, Durst took an interest in breakdancing, hip-hop, punk rock, and heavy metal. He began to rap, skate, beatbox, and DJ. That's <laughs> a lot. Like, yeah. pick, pick a lane. Pick a fucking lane. Don't, you, you don't get to do it all. He confusing people. Who is he friends with? Like, the hip-hop kids and the fucking skaters? That's, yeah. That's not, that's not right. You can only be in one circle, Fred. <laughs> Another thing I didn't know about him. Leaving the Navy after just two years... Durst moved back to Jacksonville with his father, where he worked as a landscaper and a tattoo artist. This guy's lived the life, man. (laughs) Fred, buddy, (laughs) you need an area of expertise. (laughs) 
can't you can't be a landscaper and a tattoo artist. That's How not does he have the thing. time? I bet you he just bought a bought a tattoo machine off like some fucking dodgy guy who'd stole one or something. I like to think he did them both at the same time. So he was like in someone's backyard, but like that's where he told the person to go for their tattoo appointment. <laughs> Like, yeah, meet me. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm putting down a patio. <laughs> just meet me there and I'll, uh, yeah, we'll get you what you need. Uh, while developing an idea for a band that combined elements of rock and hip hop. So while he's doing, while he's landscaping and tattooing people, he's actually got grand schemes to fuse rock and hip hop. But he's not done it yet. He's just got the ideas. <laughs> He's like, in his head, he's like, like those memes with the fucking numbers all around them and shit. He's doing all the calculations like rock, hip hop. How do we bring these together? But it took him, I guess, some years. Yeah, four years, it looks like, to start a band. Now, the the thing I'm surprised by is there's no controversy section on his Wikipedia page. But there is, and this is because he's partly in the hip hop world, a feuds section. Because he, uh. he, he didn't have uh, controversies, he had feuds. But that, what that means is what's not mentioned is, do you remember when he had a sex tape leaked? Yeah. Oh. I know. No. But Picture that. I don't want to know about that. <laughs> um, I, I do want to know, did he leave his hat on, though? <laughs> is that, who is that? Is that Tom Jones, you can leave your hat on? Who yeah, did that is song? that what it is? It just makes me think of uh, the full Monty. <laughs> right, yeah. Very English. Do Americans know what the full Monty is? I bet they don't. We've weirdly already talked about the full Monty once. Have we? <laughs> yeah, I think. But wait, what were the jobs? Was it? What? It's set in the eighties in like a northern town, isn't it? You know what's funny is because of that, I always confuse the, f- <laughs> and they're so not the same. I always confuse the full Monty when I picture the film with Billy Elliot. Ah, okay. <laughs> because it's just like a, a, a working class town. Like gritty I... English or British <laughs> yeah. looking, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it was one of them where like I don't know what were they fucking miners or something. One of the, one of the fucking industries that got like butchered in the eighties and northern yeah, probably England, miners, wasn't it? Where uh, every all like the fellas lost the job, so there was like massive unemployment, and these guys, these like five friends or whatever, decided to become uh, strippers. That's what the film's about. Um, <laughs> It's a good film. It's, it's Magic Mike if you were a Northern English person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Magic Mike, but just imagine, like, your friend's weird dad. <laughs> <It's the guy. laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I don't want to Google it because I don't want to see any details of it. But from memory, he said the reason it was leaked is that he gave his laptop to a repairman and they found it and leaked it on the internet. Yeah. I don't believe. I don't believe that's true. I think he posted Surely. it himself because he was like, sure. yeah, I, I think he was at home. He was in the hat and he was thinking, you know what people want? They want to see Fred. They want to see Fred naked. People want to see little Fred. That's what he was thinking. Oh. <laughs> you think he puts a little hat on it? Oh. <laughs> um, when do you think he started wearing the hat and decided, like, this is it? I'm not, I'm not going to stop. Well, you see, I don't know a lot about Limp Biscuit in 2020, but I don't think he still wears the hat. I think he ditched it because I... because Jarrett made fun of him. That's why he, that's why he got rid of the hat. I think that's, I think, that's what I heard. Um, Gail, the suit the made fun of them in a, in a video, so he was mm-hmm. like, "That's the last straw." Because I do I do think if you re- if you are someone who's like thinks they're really hardcore and bowling for suit makes makes fun of you, that's got to <laughs> be the point where you just go fuck. I am pathetic. Right. <laughs> and I'm saying that as someone who gets made fun of by Bone with Soup frequently. <laughs> mm-hmm. And obviously like I'm also someone who thinks they're hardcore, I guess, is what my you reference was. knew you were pathetic. So. Right, yeah, yeah, I didn't need them to tell me. Uh, so feud-wise, he had a feud with Slipknot in the late 90s. Um, is that because they were both new metal? Well, yeah, this, I think this is it. Is you know, They were too similar. He didn't like it. Mm-hmm. He, he called Slipknot fans fat, ugly kids. And what was what's funny is it seems like Corey Taylor handled it quite well by just saying, for the most part, uh, Slipknot fans, for the most part, enjoy all kinds of music, like Limp Biscuit, maybe. 
Um, so by insulting Slipknot fans, you're probably calling your own fans fat, ugly kids. Like, you, mm. why have you done this? Well, um, totally, because if you're into that genre and you like both bands, you'd be pretty yeah. pissed off if he said that. Yeah, in 1999, if you liked that genre, there were like yeah. 10 bands that were famous for doing it and everyone else was mm. underground. So yeah, definitely. That's a definitely. fair strike. It should have been cancelled then, immediately. So you fucked it, Fred. Uh, Limp Bizkit and Placebo had a feud in 1998. <laughs> Um, because Fred Durst was comparing a show, had a side stage spat with the placebo singer. Uh, side and then stage, he... like during the show. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess, what? like, yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> and then he asked the crowd to chant "Placebo sucks" right before Placebo came on, which I can imagine would piss you off. Like, I'd be upset if that was my band. And it says Placebo basically said they didn't. Nobody told them that Fred Durst we could, would be comparing the show. And I think they don't say it, but I think the inference is. We wouldn't have fucking gone to a show if we were told Fred Durst will be comparing the show. <laughs> um, and also that they would have to follow the opening act, Kid Rock. They weren't happy with that either. Uh, it also says, and I've not, cl- I've not clicked any sources, that, that, and there has been sources cited, but this is one sentence at the end. By 2004, the feud had ended. It doesn't say, like, why or anything. Just not be anyone. By then, we don't know when, but by then we can say for yeah. definite it was over. No one ever mentioned it after 2004. Uh, he had a feud with Eminem because Eminem had a feud with Everlast. You see, hip-hop, it's real... Everyone's mad at everyone, right? It's well, all... As... It's very playground. As soon as I heard we were cancelling Fred Durst, again, made me think of that Eminem song where he's saying about Carson Daly and Fred Durst. Yeah. Who was and... it, Christina Aguilera? Yes, or, yeah. yeah. So that was like the billionth time Eminem had, had taken shots at Fred Durst. Um, mm. He says, because he says something in one of his songs about, it may even be the same song, I can't remember, but he says something about you can get your ass kicked like those little Limp Biscuit bastards. <laughs> also, what does Limp Biscuit mean? No idea. Let's look into that in a minute. It sounds gross because you know what it sounds like? Soggy Biscuit. Oh, let's not talk about that. If anyone doesn't know what that is, don't Google it. That's not going to work. Everyone's clearly going to Google it if they don't know what it is. <laughs> Disgusting. Don't Google image it, then. Okay, yeah, don't. Don't. <laughs> do not go into Pornhub and search that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this resulted in Eminem creating a diss track against Durst called Girls. He called them girls. You get it, because they're not girls, but he called them girls. Man. Cutting, it's cutting. Very mean. <laughs> it's rude, actually. Um, and and this actually, I read about this the other day and looked it up because you're going to love this crossover. And I say crossover, I just mean of things that we've been involved in in some way. On the sixth of October, two thousand and eighteen, Shaggy Two Dope from the hip hop duo Insane Clown Posse attempted <laughs> to drop kick Durst during their performance of the song Faith. <laughs> what? I've there's a fucking YouTube video of it. He fucking he runs on stage and does like a flying kick at him. And misses. He only goes far enough to touch him and then he hits the floor. And literally, so there's video from the side, so you can watch him do it, but there's video from the front of Fred Durst, <laughs> like he's singing, and he literally just goes, Oh <laughs> that that's it. And it's like oh, that's th- this is the most pathetic thing about you grown men, what are you doing? But apparently he just did it for like a bet or a dare or something, but then uh, DJ Lethal, who is apparently another member of Limp Bizkit, uh, went live on Instagram, walking around the town trying to find Shaggy Two Dope. And he was like, man, where is he? He's got to be staying around here somewhere. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> it's, it's insane. Like he's going to be wandering the streets. Well, because I think they were on some kind of tour, something like Warp Tour or whatever. Like... So this was recently? 2018. <laughs> 2000... In 2018, oh. Insane Clown Posse and Limp Bizkit had a feud. <laughs> It's like they were. It's like no one's paying attention to us. We need to do something. They've got to be doing something, I suppose. Yeah. How old do you reckon Fred Durst is? Thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. Oh, come on. He's got to be older than that. Yeah, he must be older. Oh, he is. Oh, you're well off. Forty-nine. In fact, it's his birthday this month. Ah. Oh. <laughs> well, he's not going to get to enjoy it because he's cancelled. Oh, I forgot we were cancelling him for a second. I was going to wish him happy birthday. <laughs> no, fuck that guy. Toby, have a terrible birthday. According to 2Dope, now this is something I didn't know about Shaggy 2Dope. According to 2Dope, 
and I love when they call him like as if that's his real surname. As if that's his... Also, how much do you know about Shaggy Tudor? <laughs> Mr. Tudub said, <laughs> um, who is a pro wrestler with years of experience, uh, I see that. he did not intend to cause Durst any harm, and the motive for the kick stemmed from a dare he had with a security guard that let him on the stage after Durst <laughs> announced, after Durst announced, I need some people on stage. So I guess he wanted the crowd to invade the stage, which there's nothing cooler than telling the crowd to invade the stage so that they invade the stage. That's, that's punk rock, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so all you need to do to be able to assault a fucking musician is bet their security guard that you're going to do it? I mean, I imagine it was like a venue security, not the band security. <laughs> that doesn't make any difference. Well, that, yeah, there you go, guys. If you're listening to this and you want to go see Limp Biscuit and kick Fred Durst in the back, just bet <laughs> someone. Because the odds are most people in the room think he's a prick. So you can just bet um, someone, like, I bet I can kick that guy. And they'll go, well, try it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, also, Limp Biscuit totally could mean something gross because they their big album was um, chocolate starfish in the hot dog flavored water, wasn't it? Terrible. So, you know. Which. <sighs> Another thing that I remember from primary school, because what year did that album come out? Uh, 2001, I want to say. Okay, so it must have been, like, about to go into secondary school. But um. Oh, my God. It, 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 I've, just, like, I've just gone down, scrolled down to find out when it came out, and it says, the press thought he was joking about the title. <laughs> <laughs> the press. Just the, all of them. <laughs> um, so when did it come out? Was it 2001? The phrase chocolate starfish refers to the human anus. <laughs> Why did they specify human? Because <laughs> um, um, when I was like 10, I was like, oh yeah, this is this is my favourite rap album. <laughs> and I was like having this conversation with a boy in my class and I was like, who's your favourite rapper? And he was like, Limp Biscuit," And I was like, actually, that's the name of the band. The guy's called Fred Diss. And then he had an argument with me about it and all the other boys just agreed with him and I was like so mad. So he thought the guy's name was Limp Biscuit. Yeah, it's like, you know, when people call Kevin McAllister home alone. Is that something that people do? I've never heard anyone do that. That's fucking hilarious. Yeah. I don't, like in I don't Family know. Guy when he says, Oh, I want to meet Scrubs and Black Scrubs. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what it's like. Uh, it came out in two thousand. Oh yeah, yeah. So it was like nine or ten. October two thousand. So it's about to be twenty years old. Um it, oh, it, it refers to the human anus and Durst himself, who is frequently being called an asshole. <laughs> what? What? what does that mean? I don't think he named that like, asshole. No. So, he what? was like, you know who's an asshole? Me. <laughs> <laughs> Borland contributed the other half of the album title when the band was standing around at a truck stop looking at bottles of flavoured water and Borland joked that the truck stop didn't have hot dog or meat flavoured water. I don't think that's true at all. I don't believe that for a second. I don't believe that for a second. It's clearly another euphemism. It clearly is. Why, why would they lie about that? Um, the source that they've cited is a book called Guitar World Presents New Metal. So I'm not going to read that book to find out if it's true. <laughs> Fuck that. Durst named the band Limp Biscuit because he wanted a name that would repel listeners. According to Durst, the name is there to turn people's heads away. A lot of people pick up the disc and go, Limp Biscuit, oh, they must suck. Those are the people that we don't even want listening to our music. <laughs> Other names were considered by Durst, including Gimp Disco, <laughs> Way better. Split Dick Slit, Bitch Ugh. Piglet, and Blood Fart. Oh, they're all fucking horrible. Yeah, oh. yeah. I, I, if they, they, if there's, there's no way that they would have got any shows or a record label if they were called Bitch Piglet, <laughs> <laughs> which is a I great know, name. What are all them fucking black metal bands and albums? What like aborted fetus and shit? Yeah, <sighs> yeah. I hate all that stuff. I also read a couple of days ago that there was a festival in Wisconsin in July mm -hmm. that was supposed to be called Herd Immunity Festival, but they had to change their name. <laughs> and they just oh, wait, it... are we just coincidentally supposed to be called that? No, no, no. 
No, oh. <laughs> they planned. They planned a festival where the plan was: we'll all go, we'll all get coronavirus, <laughs> and that way we've all had it, and then we can just carry on with our lives. But they had to change the name. And they called it Mini July Festival, which doesn't really hit the same, does it? Um, but the lineup, right? It was Static X headlining. Do you remember that band? I thought, didn't that guy die? He did. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So the guy with the he, big hair, right? Yeah. So he wanted to get the band back together. They all refused to be in a band with him. So he went so he went solo, but still used the name. Then when they then when he died, they all they all performed under that name again. It's fucked up, that's, that, isn't it? Scene. That's um yeah. but anyway, they released a statement saying that they recommend everyone who attends wear a mask. And also they had to cut capacity down from ten thousand to two thousand. Jesus. So, but what was supposed to be a herd immunity festival actually just ended up being a group of Socially. people following the guidelines. <laughs> Socially distanced festival. Well, it was <clears throat> the it was Static X, and then the next band below was Dope. Who um, I, there's 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 never been confirmed, but apparently the singer for Dope is the new singer for Static X. So they always tour together now, and. Um, they did a tour. They did a European tour a couple of years ago that was Static X, uh, uh, Dope, Soil, and Wednesday Thirteen. And I would have fucking loved to see that tour. I don't really know any of those songs except Wednesday Thirteen. Did some songs that I like. So you'll just have that one famous song, Halo, which you will definitely have heard. Oh, that yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That reminds me of the Crazy L. And Static X had that one famous song, Black or White, Black and White. Black and white. Not you don't even know <laughs> what's no, it no. sound like. Um, it it <laughs> doesn't matter if you're black or white. It was like losing my mind, losing my mind. It's blurring, it's fading. He sounded like that. Oh, uh, <laughs> that must sound vaguely familiar. Yeah, I just remember being a kid and thinking, "This is so funny." This song. <laughs> <laughs> they were all taking it so seriously, and um, he was going, "It's black and white." And I thought that was hilarious. And he had big sticky up there. It was just yeah. Really cool. He had hair like um, who was it? Paul from Mortal Kombat was it? Or Tekken? I always get them confused. Oh yeah, Tekken. Yeah. Anyway, well, I went on a, like a fucking got got on one of those like Wikipedia rabbit holes, reading about Static X and Wayne Static, the guy who died. His um, wife. It's actually a fucking tragic story. She killed herself afterwards. It was horrible um she was a porn star and her first movie was called 19 year old cuties pov2 uh came out in 2007 when she was 25 which uh, there's there was a lot to take in for me about this right firstly when you see like 19 year old on porn not 19 which you know i've always known but this is nice to have proof like she was 25 <laughs> secondly 19 year old cuties pov2 but pov3 also came out the same year so that's the quality of film we're talking about is they didn't even wait to release the sequel they were just like this is going to be big just get the next one out right now people are going to want she, this she wasn't in the first movie she wasn't in the first one but she was in two and three i see are they, are, do they have you seen these films no, I was on Wikipedia. Ah, uh, I see. I'm not going to look them up now. I'm... No, I don't... <laughs> oh, no. Um, I'm not going to, like, screen share and watch them now. I feel like we've derailed from the whole fucking <laughs> point of where we started here. No? Yeah, have you never heard our show? No, you uh, don't, have you? No, I don't listen to it. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I love it. A very, um, a very warm, and I think it's from doing that Wayne Static impression. <laughs> I've, I've, I've worked myself into a frenzy now, trying to get into his mindset of screaming, "I'm losing my mind." <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm just thinking of that other song. It made me think of Last Resort by Papa Roach. Right. I can't even remember why anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Good. Did you say good. losing my mind? Yeah. Does he uh, say that? Like, yeah, losing my sight, losing my mind. Wish somebody would tell me what was. I wish somebody would tell me I'm fine. <laughs> Did you write that song? <laughs> um, yeah, also, I never understood that losing my sight line in that song. He's going blind because he's depressed. I don't understand what, what that means. No, maybe he means like his metaphorical sight. Right, okay. The thing that made me laugh about that song is how the bridge is just him saying I'm crying over and over again. <laughs> and 
I found this lyric video once on YouTube years ago and I saved a screenshot of it because I was like, someday I'm going to want this to use in like a tweet or like a reaction to someone or something. And on this lyric video, they just, for the bridge, it just said, I'm crying times four. (laughs) Which is just the funniest thing to me. I'm crying times four. Four times crying. (laughs) Hey, this is totally off topic, but did you never use the screenshot of Sid feeding me something? Was it because I told you not to? Remember? No, you. I I do remember. I didn't clip it. No, you. You. I didn't because you specifically said on the audio. No, you have to pay to find out what we're talking about. So yeah. I thought that was funnier to just leave it like that. Okay, that is funny. There you go. That was a producer decision. <laughs> that was when I had my producer hat on. Is it a red hat? <laughs> Did you like how I brought it back? Yeah, but I have nothing else to say about Fred Durst. In fact, I don't want to talk about that guy ever again. He doesn't exist to me anymore. Is he cancelled? He's cancelled. Hey, Fred. You know... You're done. Yeah. What was Actually, that? One, one other reason to cancel him is just the entirety of that song where he talks about Nookie. Cancelled. Oh, I don't really know what that is, but it sounds gross. I did it all for the Nookie. Gross. I did it all for the nookie so you can take that cookie and stick it up your ass, I think are the words. I don't really know what it's about other than other than <laughs> something to do with Fred Durst and sex. So again, don't want to know. No. no. <laughs> he wants everyone to know. <laughs> Fred Durst releasing a song where he says, I did it all for the nookie is the same vibes as when Lonely Island did that song with Akon. I just had sex and it felt so good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> same thing. Except he wasn't joking. <laughs> No, that's what I mean. Like, it's yeah. it, it's the same thing. It's like, I'm just going to tell everyone I just had sex. Mm-hmm. You know, my ex-girlfriend, I was, I, she didn't know who Lonely Island were, and I was trying to explain, and I'm like, you must have heard Jizz in my pants. She's like, no. I'm like, right. what about I just had sex, that song with Akon? And she was like, oh, I just thought that was a song by Akon. <laughs> I'm like, what? what? A woman let me put my penis inside of her. You think he he wrote that line and it wasn't a joke. He was just like, this is going to be a good song. You know, it's going to be a smash like, hit. That's so weird. Maybe she just thought Akon was really weird. I mean, he is a bit. But man, that know. song locked up. And Lonely. I mean, Lonely. Come on, guys. Lonely. Oh, that song. Is that yeah. what he did? Yeah. That's creepy. Why? There's a voice on it. No? Oh, it's not a voice. It's a sample from of a song from the 50s, I think. Yeah, well, it's I don't know. Someone do the Googling for us and find that out. Get back to us in a week when this show comes out. Do you have any, like, I mean, you you have stuff in your list you haven't talked about. Loads of it. Oh, yeah. But most of it's just boring stuff. I don't even really, I don't know. But you know what? Something did happen recently. Um, a couple of things happened. Do you want me to ask how was your week again so you can try again because you fucked it up the first first time I asked? Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> Nothing happened. If you'd like. I mean, it wasn't It wasn't like something happened. It wasn't a big fucking deal. Tell me how shitty your week was. Oh, literally. <laughs> <laughs> that was a nice lead-in for this story because I was um, sitting with my mate um, last week at a distance. And um, <laughs> yeah, this... Uh, I don't know. If, uh, we've talked about this before, how there's fucking shitloads of seagulls in Liverpool. Yes, because you're a coastal city. Yeah, and they're really fucking loud, and um, especially at the moment because the babies are out and about, so they're, like, swooping at you while you're and walking past, minding your own business. They're like, Ooh, and you're they're, trying to, like... They're big. If you're not from a place that has um, seagulls, I, you... You're not registering how fucking big a seagull is because I forget until I see one in Liverpool again, and I'm like, I forgot they were like a foot tall. It's insane. Let me see what the wingspan is. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's way, so... way bigger than like like a chicken. Like they're big birds, aren't they? I can't believe we don't eat them because bigger they're fucking big. <laughs> Yeah, but they're probably full of shit because they just eat scraps of takeaway off the floor. Well, yeah, but obviously if we ate them, we would rear them and fucking feed them. Okay, I don't know what kind of gull it is. Oh, okay, it looks like a great black-backed gull. Between 1.5 and 1.7 metre wingspan. Two metres, almost two metre wingspan. 1.5 metres is like... That's pr- that's pr- that's <laughs> like your right. arms. Right, no, I'm thinking, because your arm span is supposed to be how tall you are, isn't it? 
Is it? I don't know. I, I think don't know so. how tall I am in meters. That's. I think. I think it is. So, so it's almost my arm span. Like I think I'm oh, like so one. I think I'm one one point seven five. If so, this seagull did that, like, if I if if I like bent one arm, it would be. <laughs> <laughs> so guys if you can imagine that <laughs> so picture that guys <laughs> picture, <laughs> picture one one and a bit of my arms <laughs> right anyway so i was just sitting having a nice time in the sun minding my own business this seagull shit on the pavement and i mean it was far away from me but it was such a powerful large bird ship that it splashed I'm, I want to say at least more than 1.7 meters. So across. powerful, so yeah. powerful. guys, this was the Jeff Bezos <laughs> of bird shits. <laughs> Splashed my leg. I took a picture of my leg with the splashes on because I couldn't believe it. I was like outraged by it, and um, luckily I had a tissue nearby, so I just wiped it off. But that was that was just. That was just the start of my shitty week um, because <laughs> a few days later, Loki was not feeling well. Um, I think he just not ate much all day. And then um, so the next day, he seemed a bit better. But uh, I had a cinnamon bun and he was sniffing away at it, like really trying to like, he, I could tell he really wanted some. So I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll see if he likes the frosting. So I put a bit of the frosting on my finger and let him lick it off. <laughs> and um, he really enjoyed it. But I was I've like, accident- I've accidentally clicked on videos like that when I was searching for other things. <laughs> oh, stop. Anyway, so I let him have a taste of my bone. I don't know. <laughs> As a treat, I don't know. Um... <laughs> I've accidentally clicked on videos like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, stop. Oh, yes, he-, he really loved it, but I thought better not give him too much of this because, like, it's not going to be good for him, and he'd probably feel sick afterwards mm. and um so i came in to tell sid that i was like oh, i've just let him have had a little bit of this as a treat because i know he's not even feeling well so sid said well i'm glad i'm not doing his next walk then and i was like what do you mean it'll be fine <laughs> and uh yeah when i took him out not long after <laughs> he just like had like extreme i mean how graphic should i go with this just a liquid because you want this is the worst podcast on the air <laughs> yeah, liquidy, horrible, horrible diarrhea anyway. But also, it was right as, for some reason, I've actually, while was... I've actually accidentally clicked on videos like that. Stop, oh my God. While it was happening, a, a car parked right next to where I was standing. So I was like, you know when that happens and it's... To watch? No. Because uh, I've accidentally no. clicked on videos like that. Stop it. Oh my God. A car had parked and someone had got out. So it was like, well, I can't just... Like, it was totally liquid. I couldn't pick it up. But I thought, if they just see this happen and see me not even try, it, that'll yeah. be that'll look terrible. I'll look like one of them people who just lets the dog shit and lets people walk in it. Anyway, and it wasn't, like, in the middle of the street. It was, like, against a wall. <laughs> so anyway, I tried to grasp this liquid up with a plastic bag on my hand <laughs> um, and obviously that didn't go well and I got dog shit on my hands and then I just uh. I, I didn't have any like <laughs> pickies on me so I just had to like walk home with like shitty <laughs> you can like grab a leaf or something no it was on like concrete I was in the park oh man yeah, it was terrible. I might have to put a content warning on this episode <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's yeah. a pretty shitty week. Ah. I'm sorry that happened to you. It sounds fucking terrible. I'm sorry I told you all about it. Mm. You should have kept that to yourself. I wouldn't have told yeah. anyone if that happened to me. Oh, well. It's the difference between you and me. Well, guys, sorry about episode 48 <laughs> of Hangover You Don't Deserve podcast. Please remember to follow us on all social media at A-H-Y-D-D pod if you can stand it. Uh, find us on Patreon, patreon.com slash A-H-Y-D-D pod, where you can see the full unedited video versions of all of our episodes we've recorded during the lockdown and a bunch of other stuff. Send us an email if you want to hear us talk about something, if you have a hangover cure to suggest. If you just want to tell us about an embarrassing drunk thing that's happened to you, then that's A-H-Y-D-D pod at gmail.com. And if you have forgotten then please remember 
stay safe, wear a mask, and fuck Jared Spear. In that order. Yeah, I mean, you know, wear a mask while you fuck him. We don't know what he's got. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for listening. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Sorry. Are they still drunk? Are they hungover? Sophie and Daniel, definitely not sober. Thank you for listening to the Hangover You Don't Deserve podcast.